This album has a song called Marlon Brando on it. It could have been a contender for Song of the Year, I think. I'm gonna suggest you listen to this album here. I'm gonna give you an offer you can't refuse. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here I am with another Now and Then video. This is the segment in, on my channel in which I take a look at a recently released album, as well as one from that same artist's back catalogue. I am casting the Now and Then spotlight this time on British jazz pop artist Jamie Cullum. And for now we're going to be talking about his brand new album, Taller. This is his seventh album, uh, his first album in five years, and actually not counting his uh, recent standards release, Interlude, this is actually his first album in six years. Now, I don't remember exactly how I first heard about Jamie Cullum, but the first song that I recall hearing was All at Sea, which was an original uh, song from his album 20-something. And I honestly, to be honest, I did not think much of the song at the time, but what really struck me was his voice. He's got one of those unique voices, and you know how much I like unique, uh, unusual singing voices. A little bit rough around the edges, a little gravelly, and in some ways, and probably more in the past than now, he would always sound just a little bit like he was slurring his uh, words, his lyrics in his songs, which added to his charm in my opinion. Some of you might not care for that, but that was what I liked about him. Now when Jamie Cullum first started out, he was rooted very much in the jazz genre, uh, you know, mostly covers of uh, Great American Songbook standards and uh, some classics from the early days of Broadway, Sondheim and, and whatnot. Uh, but uh, he has gradually, over the years, uh, incorporated more contemporary pop in, uh, influences into his work, uh, as well as adjacent genres like uh, R&P and soul, and even a little hip-hop. And also, besides the jazz genre, another thing he's slowly moved away from in his albums is covers of classic songs. Uh, in fact, this is actually the first album that includes no covers at all, uh, at least on the standard edition. Uh, he does have a cover, in this case, of a classic rock song, The Man by The Killers, on the uh, deluxe version of the album. Now this album, Taller, opens up with a strong soul groove on the title track. Uh, it's a somewhat self-deprecating song about his slight deficiency in terms of height, uh, or perhaps uh, it can be taken in a not-so-literal context. Uh, maybe in a way it's more of uh, a failure, in his own eyes at least, to measure up to the worthiness of his wife's love. Uh, so yeah, those those lyrics, that's what makes this song so good, is those lyrics can be taken in more than one way. Uh, there does seem to be a, a bit of a pessimistic streak in several songs on this album. I mean, kind of the slightly darker color palette of the cover kind of sort of hints at that. Um, a couple of uh, examples of this on this album are the songs Life is Grey and The Age of Anxiety. Those titles seem to kind of speak for themselves, I guess you'd say. Although the pessimism in the in the album is eased a little bit uh, not only by his always charming voice but also with a, a little bit of wry humor that he injects into nearly every song that he does. Now that's not to say this album is not without its more optimistic tracks though. Uh, the song Mankind shows Jamie declaring a steadfast refusal to stop believing in the good side of humanity which I mean we could all use a song like that right now at least I could I know. And there's another song called For the Love, which is a quietly uplifting track about uh, doing what you love for the joy it gives you. And, uh, you know, that's another message that uh, I couldn't get enough of. Uh, there's, then there's another song. It's one of the uh, first singles off the album called Drink. It's a beautiful waltzing kind of a track that uh, reminds us to take the bad with the good in life and to, uh, according to the lyrics, drink in the sunshine. And now there's a standout track on here that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's called Usher. And it's this great energetic slice of funk that, if I didn't know better, it would make me think I was listening to the next Bruno Mars single. Uh, that's how poppin' and upbeat this song is. And uh, most of the other songs, though, are either unmemorable or, more likely, they just haven't grown on me enough yet. Uh, I'm still listening and to, uh, absorbing this album. And strangely, several of the most enjoyable tracks on this album, for me anyway, are the ones you'll only find on the deluxe version. Uh, first of all, Work of Art is that is just a stomping swing revival flavored blast of fun that uh, urges the listener to live their life like a work of art. 
And another bonus track on here is called Marlon Brando, and that's a uh, mid-tempo love song in a way in which Jamie pledges to be his lover's personal hero, his Marlon Bra I'll be your Marlon Brando, I'll slay the vampire. Kind of gives you the idea. And Show Me the Magic is another one, and that's just an all-out big band jazzy tune that he wrote himself, but it sounds like it's a great American songbook standard from the 50s, honestly. And then, of course, as I mentioned, The Man, the cover by uh, a cover of The Killer's Song, that was actually originally in the soundtrack from a film called King of Thieves. So, uh, yeah, overall, this is a, an excellent album to, to introduce you to Jamie Cullum. To, it really gives you an idea of what he's really about. Um, some of his other albums have been more detours into uh, other types of stuff. Uh, I can get into that maybe later in a, in a future review if you're interested. Uh, if I have one complaint about this album, it would be its sequencing. Uh, it seems to really seesaw from one heavier or faster paced song to a more subdued ballad and then back again. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't take a more gradual transition between the moods uh, in songs. Uh, so the sequencing I think might have, could have maybe been arranged better on the album. But anyway, that's, you know, splitting hairs. It's a small complaint only, honestly. Uh, but yeah, still, it was for me. It was worth the the six year wait uh, from his last uh, album of original material. So yeah, the ta uh, taller by Jamie Cullum. It's a great album. But that was now, and this is then, the pursuit. Jamie Cullum's fourth album from two thousand nine. Now, one thing that I try to do as often as possible with this now and then segment is to choose for the then part, an album that either I've struggled to get into or may otherwise just be one of my least favorites from that artist. And uh, for some reason it was this one, and I'm not quite sure why. Uh, the album opens with a Cole Porter standard, just one of those things, and it's a great rendition. And it also includes two other covers, uh, If I Ruled the World and the Sondheim tune Not While I'm Around from Sweeney Todd. And it also includes a contemporary cover, as usually happens with uh, most Jamie Cullum's albums. In this case, it is a cover of Rihanna's Don't Stop the Music. So yeah, he likes to choose unusual covers, uh, you know, ones that you might not expect him to do uh, on his albums. And that's one of the things I look forward to with Jamie Cullum. Uh, one of the singles on here called I'm All Over It, it's a catchy, bouncy, piano-based jazz pop tune that it, it was a wise choice for the first single. It's one of the catchiest songs on the album. And there's another one on here called You and Me Are Gone, and that just makes you want to start tapping your toes right away with its rolling, tumbling, kind of a swing-influenced beat. And then there's another original tune on here called We Run Things, uh, which has what sounds to me anyway like a bit of a Latin groove to it, kind of a shuffly sort of a uh, groove. But it almost sounds kind of like Dave Brubeck might have co-written it with its, its unique time signature. Uh, now the trouble with these three songs is, I'm not sure what the lyrics in any of those songs are trying to say. Uh, and I've read them and reread them several times, and I don't know if it was just you know my frame of mind while I was uh, writing the notes for this video or, or what, but uh, and it might just be me, and that's probably one reason why I've had trouble really getting into this album. Uh, but it's, it still does have plenty of other really, really good songs. Wheels is a nice mid-tempo sort of tune in which uh, the singer seems to be expressing both anxiety and excitement at the same time at life turning out differently than he expected. That's probably something that we can all relate to in a, to an extent, uh, and that you know makes the song very interesting, definitely. Uh, and then there's Mixtape, which, as you can probably guess from its title, it's a favorite of mine. Uh, lots of music references in the lyrics, uh, in which Jamie name-checks the very wide variety of artists he would choose from if he were to make a mixtape for his girl. So yeah, a really, really fun song, that one. And then there's a very interesting closing track to this album. A closing track, at least in terms of the standard edition of the album. It's a seven-minute long track called Music Is Through, which takes on a, a kind of a dance club EDM sort of feel. And it's it's definitely the farthest he's gone in that direction. Uh, it's very catchy, but in a way I can kind of see why he hasn't gone there again since. It's, in some respects, it's just not Jamie. But but it's still, it's it's a fun, it's an interesting song to listen to, to, to hear his take on that genre. And there are also a couple of uh, romantic ballads on this album. But uh, overall, it's one of the more upbeat Jamie Cullum albums, which is all the more reason why I'm not understanding why I don't enjoy it more than I do. Uh, it, it might just be those somewhat cryptic lyrics in those first few songs that I mentioned, and uh, but it's not leaving my collection, definitely not. I've got pretty much all of Jamie Cullum's albums except his first album, which was independently released. 
um, and I'm going to keep on spinning it every now and then uh, just to see if I can get it to grow on me a little bit more over the years. So now as of which album of these two that I recommend, it shouldn't be any surprise to you. Taller is uh, definitely my choice over the two. Uh, although, let me make clear though, I like several of his other albums more than I like uh, The Pursuit. Uh, I may go over those albums uh, later on in a different video if you'd like me to delve more into Jamie Collum for you. But yeah, uh, as far as the two albums I've reviewed on this video, my choice is definitely Taller. I recommend checking it out if you like uh, pop, singer-songwriter pop that delves into the jazz genre. It's, you definitely can't go wrong with that album. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at Jamie Cullum now and then. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so please check it out and follow along. Also, I invite you to please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.